Today is the feast of Saint Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits. Ignatius was born in the year 1491 and died when he was 65 years old in the year 1556. He died on the 31st of July and that is why we celebrate his feast day on this day. Of the many things that I could say about Ignatius and Ignatian spirituality, I want to choose four for our reflection on this feast day. The first of this is the overarching quality which Ignatius possessed and wants every Jesuit and every individual to possess is what is termed very simply as the Magis. The motto of the Society of Jesus is in Latin ad maiorem de gloriam or as it is sometimes known AMDG. Ad maiorem de gloriam means for the greater glory of God. The reason why Ignatius chose the comparative degree and not the positive, the great glory of God or the superlative, the greatest glory of God was because Ignatius was aware that you could always strive for more. There was never being content with the status quo. There was never being complacent. There was always and every time the striving for the more. The word magis therefore is a Latin term which means more and refers to the comparative degree. One can jump higher than the highest. One can run faster than the fastest. One can be braver than the bravest. One can be more. In the scheme of Ignatius, the good becomes better. The better becomes better still. And the better still becomes still better. And the still better becomes better still. And it goes on and on and on. And there is no stopping. In other words, a Jesuit and anyone associated with Jesuits can never say at any moment, I have done all that is required of me. I am content. I am complacent. No, there is no complacency in our way of life. The Magis ad Maiorem Dei Gloriam is a quality which fills the heart the work and everything a Jesuit says and does. It is indeed that quality which enters into every other quality and influences it. It is like the leaven in the door. It is like the salt which a person puts into the meal. It is like the light which gives light to the whole room. The Magis, therefore, is not just one of the many qualities. It is the quality which a Jesuit has to possess. The second quality is that Ignatius regarded whatever was given to him as given in trust. And so, therefore, he regarded himself as a trustee as a person who was given charge of something but only for a moment in time. And the consequences of being a trustee were two. First, Ignatius used whatever he was given responsibly because he knew that he was accountable for it. And the second was Ignatius knew that it was given to him for a short period of time and would have to be returned soon. And so therefore, in his use of time, not only was he responsible, in his use of things, not only was he responsible, but he was always aware that it could be taken away at any time, and therefore, he was totally, he was completely detached. 
he possessed what was known as the quality of indifference, which in Ignatian terms does not mean that he couldn't care less. Rather, it means that he cared so much that he was willing to let it go. Whether it was the society of Jesus, whether it was his companions, whether it was the fantastic work that his companions and he were doing, everything Ignatius believed was given to him in trust. He was asked at one stage when the society was flourishing even in his lifetime and someone asked him and said, Ignatius, supposing God decides that the society of Jesus has to be suppressed, that the society of Jesus has to be banned, that the society of Jesus has to be destroyed, Ignatius' response was characteristic when he said, if that is the case, I need five minutes before the Lord and that is enough. And that is why his prayer was, take Lord, receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. You have given them to me and to you I return it. Give me only your love and your grace and I am rich indeed and need nothing more. A third quality of Ignatius was his ability to find God in everything and to find everything in God. When he was on his way to Rome, our Lord appeared to him with the Father and our Lord was carrying the cross and our Lord said to Ignatius, I will be propitious to you in Rome. I will be favorable to you in Rome. Ignatius turned to his companions and said, we are going to suffer and maybe die in Rome. The favor of the Lord meant that Ignatius was ready for any kind of thing which the Lord would give him. He would be able to find God when things were going exactly as he planned and the society was flourishing and growing and doing enormous work. But he was also able to find God when he was berated by popes, when he was pulled down by cardinals and when he was told that he was not worthy to be a leader. Ignatius developed this ability to be able to find God's hand because Ignatius trusted in God so much that just like it was the food and drink of Jesus, his master, to do the Father's will, so Ignatius also assimilated this and regarded as his own food and drink, the will of God, and whatever happened as being according to God's plan. The fourth quality which I want to speak about today, about Ignatius and Ignatian spirituality, is that he was a man not for himself, but he was a man primarily for others. Ignatius strove a great deal to ensure that there was equality in the society in which he lived. He reached out to the poor, he reached out to the oppressed, he reached out to the marginalized and that is why one way in which he responded to the situation of his time was to begin schools. Today, Jesuit education is known all over the world and many people would like their children to enter a Jesuit school and be educated by the Jesuits. This is the legacy that has been left behind by Ignatius in which we as Jesuits are first men for others and we train our students to become men and women for others. If a student leaves a Jesuit school, if a student leaves a Jesuit institution and does not have this ability to reach out to others and to think of others as well and to do whatever he or she can for them, the institution has failed to communicate this wonderful quality. What do these four qualities say to each one of us today? There are times in our lives when we become complacent, 
There are times in our lives when we want to take it easy. There are times in our lives when we are successful and think that we have done everything required. At those times, the Majus speaks to us and says, No, you can do more. You can run faster. You can jump higher. You can be braver. Let the good become better. Let the better become better still. And let the better still become still better. And let it go on and on and on. We are living in a world which unfortunately we have destroyed. The Lord gave us this world which is our home in trust. The Lord handed it over to us that we might use it. But we have abused it. We have not used it as we ought to. And that is why we suffer so many effects today that we ourselves are responsible for. The trusteeship which Ignatius realized is a calling need today. All over schools and colleges, students are studying environmental studies where they are taught to use things responsibly, to plant trees, to save water, to save paper. If each one of us in our homes can save at least some paper a day, we don't use fresh paper for everything we have to write. We use paper which has already been one side used. If we can save water instead of having a bath with a shower, if we can use a bucket and decide in advance how much we are going to use, if we can switch off fans immediately when we do not require them, if we can save electricity, if we can save a number of things, and most importantly, if we can decide and promise never, never to waste food, to use less plastic, to use less of everything, we will have been able to celebrate along with Ignatius his awareness of trusteeship. There are also times in our lives when things go exactly as we have planned, where everything is hunky-dory, as the youth will say. And there are times when things do not go as planned, when our plans go awry, when our dreams are shattered, it is at those times that this quality of Ignatius, of being able to find God everywhere, of finding God in all things, of knowing that God is working for my good and that God will do nothing in my own life that is not for my good and for God's glory. My job is to continue to do what I have to do to the best of my ability and then leave whatever remains in God's hands confident in the knowledge that he will take over and complete what I have left undone. And finally, I am a man and a woman, not only for myself. I am a person, but for others. Every religion, Every great man and woman would teach his disciples, would teach his or her followers to regard this as something which they must assimilate. If I live a selfish life, if I live a self-centered life, if I live a life ensconed in my own cocoon, I'm no better than so many selfish individuals. But if I can, reach out to another, if I can give a little of myself, if I can be selfless and giving, if I can sacrifice, then I have assimilated this quality of being a person for others and I can celebrate the feast of Ignatius by saying that I am, after Ignatius, a man or woman of those qualities. I wish every one of you listening and looking at me a very, very happy feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. May God bless each one of you and may Ignatius of Loyola intercede and keep inspiring you.